for a plus b to the power of n. What are some things that you can see? Uh, power of a. Yes, Kevin? Power of a decreases. Is it? Decreases by one each time. Do you see that? Is that really happening? Okay, power of a decreases. Then what else do you see? Power of b increases by one each time. Okay, what else? Oh, both powers add up to n. Both powers add up to n. Is that really true? Yes. Is that really true? Yes. Let's randomly choose a term. Uh, for example, this term over here. Both powers is referring to 1 and 3. Get that out what you get? 4. 4. Oh, it's the same. Is that true for everything else? Yes. yes. Including the very last term, for example? Yes. 0 plus 5. Oh, we have 5 also. Okay, looks like it's true. Any more? Yes? So the coefficient is 1 plus b bracket n. The coefficient is 1 plus b bracket n. Uh, Okay, uh, let me try and rephrase for you because he noticed that the coefficients for every single term, for every single expansion, is the same over here, right? Same as your 1 plus b power 3, 4, 5, power n. Do you remember how we got all these coefficients? Yeah. Pascal's triangle, or we can write n choose r, isn't it? Oh, we see that they are all the same. Okay, so we say that coefficients are same as 1 plus b power n when you expand them out. Okay, any more that you noticed? Any more? Okay, tell me what same thing do you have? Uh, all positive, uh, then symmetrical. Okay, positive, symmetrical, yes. Uh, how about number of terms? How many? How many terms are there? Plus one. What plus one? N plus one. Okay. Whatever the power is with plus one, I only get the number of terms, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, these are the observations that I also had. Okay. Uh, I just want to talk about something that you mentioned. All these are pluses, right? All these we see that they are always pluses, but can that be a case that they are actually negative? Yeah. When does that happen? Minus, uh, minus b or minus For example, if you have a minus b over here, and then the power will cause the negative sign to change to positive, then it will be negative, positive, negative, depending on what your b is, right? Okay, so it is not exactly true to say it is always positive, but it depends on b. Uh, whether it is symmetrical or not, again, depends on b, and in this case, it will depend on both a and b, because you see they are going to be, be multiplied together. Sometimes a is simply x, sometimes b is simply y. Or sometimes a is x, sometimes b is x squared, for example. Okay? So things can change. Now, the next part is for you to try and derive something like this. Do you think you can do it? Based on all this information, uh, you should be able to come up with something like what we had in 3.2, chapter 3.2. I want a plus b. I want you to tell me what is the general form without referring to your textbook. Okay, because based on all the observations that you have made, you should be able to do that already. Then go ahead and check your partner, see whether you arrive at the same thing or not. If you have questions, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, page 93. Work example number 7. I will do this for you. I just need you to pay attention and listen to my explanation because the work is... You don't have to copy everything. It's already in your textbook. Okay, but I just want to bring you through it. Now, this is for question 1. 2a plus 3 power 5. They want you to expand and simplify. Okay? So, 2a plus 3 power 5. Let us compare it with our... What we have on the board a plus b power n. Okay, in this case, uh, the question unfortunately also has an a. Lah. Okay, so can you please tell me, first term, 
according to my binomial theorem expansion on the border, what is the value of a in this case, in this question? 2a. Ah, 2a, okay. So my a is actually 2a over here. What about my b? 3a. 3, okay, very good. Is it positive or negative 3? Okay, what about the power? What is the value of n? 5. Then I can straight away directly substitute everything into my binomial theorem. And that is how I expand it. Instead of trying to do uh, 2a plus 3, 2a plus 3, 2a plus 3, and then you go and wow, do your rainbow expansion, do until really very messy. We don't have to do that. We've got, we've got binomial to help us. Okay, yay. So, first one. Yes. Simple expansion, can you binomial Yes, yes. Like, power 2 like that. Would you want to use binomial for power 2? Probably not, uh, because we've already memorized it, right? Okay, let's start with this. So I've got, how many choose how many? Uh, five, five, two, five, one. <laughs> five choose zero. We all know that that is actually one. One, okay? So next we have 2a to the power of five, three to the power of zero, okay? Take note that all these is simply one, this is simply one. But I'm writing down to show you the completeness of the binomial theorem, okay? So next term, what do we have? 5 choose 1, 2, 8 power 4, 3 power 1, check the powers When you add them up, what do you get? Okay, next, 5 choose 2, 2, 8 power 3, 3 power Power add up give you? 5, okay, no space, continue 5 choose 3 um, 2, 8 power 2, and 3 power 3, 5 choose 4 2a power 1, 3 power 4, plus 5 choose 5, 2a power 0, which we know it is 1, okay? And the last term we have 3 to the power 5. So all you need to do is to evaluate. Is there anything difficult about this? The simplification. No, ah? Uh? So your answer will be as shown in our textbook, 32a power 5, plus 240a power 4, 720a power 3, 1080a power 2, 810a plus 243. Look at this final answer. Okay, yes, it is a polynomial. What else do you notice about the powers? Decreasing. The powers are decreasing, right? You see, uh, where did this where did this A come from in the original question? Where did the A it, it is inside my original question, right? There's an A in the original question. It is my first it, it is the first part. Right? It came from the first portion. Uh, look back at the board. What do you notice about the powers of A as you expand? It is decreasing. Does it correspond to this? Yes, it is. It is corresponding. Now, can you imagine, uh, what if I change the question? What if I change this question to become um, 3 plus 2A power 5? Do you think the answer, the value, will be the same? Yes. Okay, it will be the same. What about the presentation? Opposite, yeah. what will my first term be? Yeah? Uh, and then? Uh, Plus, okay, so you get the idea. Lah. So it goes the other way, 32a power 5. So if the question says, oh, expand in, uh, expand this one, and leave your answers in increasing powers of x, increasing power of x, which one will you choose? Uh, first or second? Second. second? second. Do you know how to change to the second way? Uh, just switch the position only, right? But the answers absolutely are the same. Yes? So, why uh, not, uh, at the second equal, right, from the last, you know, equal, then uh -huh. the answer over. So, you can, you can. I'm just showing you that uh, why it works based on our expansion. We're just switching all the places only. Okay? Ah, uh, if it is negative, then, um, yeah, I think we have a question on that. Yes. We shall now do... Practice now seven. Uh, that will answer your question. Practice now seven. Part B. Expand using binomial theorem. Here we have 3a minus b over 2 power 5. Same thing. I want to compare it with my original binomial a plus b to the power n. All right. Now your job is to tell me, what is my new a over here? 3a. What is my new b? Uh, try again. What is my new B? Negative B over 2. Negative B over 2. There is a difference. Huh? And what is my power? 
5. We are going to directly apply it to our binomial theorem again, which you managed to derive it yourself. And let's see what we have. First term, what do we have? 5 choose 0. 5 choose 0. Then? 3a5. Power 5. Keep referring to your the formula on the board. What's next? B over Negative b over 2, power 0. We all know that this is equal to 1, but I want you to take note of this negative sign. I still want to write it down because it is a good habit. Okay, second term. 5 choose 1. 3a power 4. four. Do I need to write negative? Yes. Okay, b over 2, power 1. one. Without working it out, can you tell me the second term? Is it a positive or negative term? Negative. Negative. First term positive or negative? Positive. Okay, so positive, negative, Rhea. Let's look at the Third term. 5 choose 2, 3a power 3, negative b over 2 squared. Positive or negative here? Positive. Positive. Huh? So positive, negative, positive. Why is the sign switching? This one over here. Right? Here we've got negative something power 0 is 1, positive. Negative something power 1, yeah, you stay negative. When I square it, the negative will become positive. So we see an alternate positive and negative. So continuing it all, we will get 5 choose 3, 3a, three power 2, negative b over 2, power 3. All this while, as you're writing, mentally add the powers. Make sure you get back 5. So plus 5 choose 4, 3a, power 3, negative b over, oh, I think I made a mistake. This should be 1. And this should be 4. And last term, 5 choose 5, 3a power 0, which some of you will not write, doesn't matter. Negative b over 2, power 5. Okay? So now, working it out, we will get... Oh, you've worked it out already? Two hundred and forty-three a power five minus four zero five over two a power four. Okay, so this is the answer. So here we have 2 plus x squared over 4. Ah, this time, look at the, the b. It is x squared over 4. Initially, we've always been handling b with power 1 only, but not as a square. Okay, think forward, what could be happening when you expand it? Okay, every time the power will be increasing by a different rate it is not just plus one anymore okay so they want the first four terms so we are familiar with the format oh wait this is power eight so eight choose zero two power eight x square over four power zero plus eight choose one sorry ascending order for which for which term x right can you look at my first term? What's the power for x? Zero. Zero, right? Okay, we try. We look at the second, second term. Huh? 2 power 7. x squared over 4 power 1. Is my power of x increasing? Yes. Ah, so is this ascending power? Yes. So do I need to like swap these two around? No. No, ah, because if you swap, ah, you will get decreasing powers already. Okay, so this is something you need to know. Sometimes depending on whether we are kind to you or not, we give it to you in a proper way. So that when you expand, naturally you will fulfill our requirement. Sometimes I want to be difficult. Then I switch it around. Then you must know how to switch it back yourself. Okay? Now, next one. Um, the third term. 8 choose 2, 2 power 6, x squared over 4 power 2. All these while keep adding the powers together. Okay, make sure you get back 8. And the last term because they wanted 4. So plus 8 choose 3, 2 power 5, x squared over 4 power 3. Done? Done? Am I done? 
What happens if I don't plus dot dot dot? Are they equal? No, they are not equal. There are so many more terms. So this is, they are not equal. Left hand side not equal, right hand side. This is absolutely wrong. Even though you have all the terms that are required. Okay? Because they are not equal. So to make them correct, I need to plus dot dot dot. To tell the marker, I know there are some more, but I'm just stopping here. Alright? Okay, these are the first four terms. Um, simplify, okay. 8 choose 0 times 2 power 8, we get 256 plus 256 x squared, 112 x power 4 plus 228 x power 6 plus dot dot dot. Okay, you may copy this down and I want you to highlight this portion, the plus dot dot dot. Sometimes you are very excited, like you get a correct answer, huh? then you forget to transfer the plus dot 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 to the next line. Okay, you may copy. 2 minus 3 over x squared, then replace with everything else. 256 plus 256 x squared plus 112 x power 4 plus 28 x power 6. Can I close the bracket? No. What do I need to do? A plus dot dot dot. Okay, close. Are they the same now? Yeah. Then do you remember in polynomials, we did some expansion, right? Then we did some comparing coefficients and stuff like that. In chapter 1. Now, your target is to give me only x power 4 terms. Here, I'm going to get many, 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 many terms. So many. But I only want x power 4. What times what will give me x power 4? Okay. Uh, one by one, huh? Which one? X. 2 times? Okay, times this one. Will give me an x power 4 term. Any more? Oh, hey. Too many people talking. One, please. The fraction times the 28 x power 6, is it? Times what? What is the fraction? Is the negative important? Oh, okay, yes, you are right. So multiply by this. Any other way that I can get x power 4? Any other way? You can think about all the possibilities. Can or not? Hey, but there's also this dot dot dot, right? How come I don't need to consider them? Why I don't need to consider what is at the, what is at the end? Yeah, because we have them in ascending order. After x power 6, what do you think we'll have next? Uh, 7 or 8? 8. 8. Will I ever get an x power 4? No. Okay, so these are the two, when multiplied together, will give me an x power 4 term. That is why I can now write coefficient of x power 4 equals to now I only want a coefficient huh? 2 times okay we said 1 1 2 okay if I don't want the coefficient I will have to write x power 4 but since I only want the coefficient I'll leave it out understand so there is another term I need to add the other term multiply them together you said multiply so what times what what times what Negative 3 Negative 3 Over Are you sure you want an x square? Oh, so what should I write? Negative 3 Okay, if you want you can write negative 3 over 1 lah, Okay, multiply by 28 Is that all? Yes, right You see, by doing it this way I don't have to expand the entire thing out Only to find where my x power 4 is Yes Oh, are you saying that you don't want to write coefficient of x power 4? You want to write, for example, term containing x power 4? Yeah. Then we will have a 2 and then x power 4 over here. There will be an x square and an x power 6. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. Then subsequently, your final answer will still require you to write coefficient of x power 4 equals to, and then you remove all your x power 4 again. Yeah, it is the same thing. It's just that I'm trying to cut short one step. Now you can do that, okay? So let's do what Cosby suggested. 2 times 412, so 224 um, minus 3 times 28. 3 times 28. So I get 1, sorry, this one will be 140x to the power of 4. So you write coefficient of x power of 4 is 140. Get it? Any questions?
Okay, then your turn to try. Your turn to try. Question two. Practice now eight. Practice now eight. Question two. And I give you a hint before you start. I want to give you a hint first. So let's read the question together. Obtain the first three terms in an expansion of 2 plus 3x power 5, 1 minus 2x power 6. They want the first three terms. What do you think the approach can be over here? Separate and then you expand, expand? General term will only give you one term. That is a general term. Doesn't really give you the first three terms. Okay, so now uh, I want you to concentrate, focus on this one first. If I were to expand it, what will I get? Okay, this will give me a number plus number with x plus number with x squared plus dot dot dot, right? Okay, this is the first one. Then the second one, this will give me number plus, okay, uh, in this case, maybe a plus minus, I don't know, plus x plus something x squared plus dot dot dot, right? Right? Without expanding everything, I know it is going to be of this format. Now, when I multiply these two together, when I multiply them together, and I want the first three terms, so my answer is going to look like something plus something x plus something x squared. Am I right? This is going to be my first three terms. The reason why I'm telling you this is that I don't want you to go and expand it entirely. If you expand it entirely, you're going to get six terms, you're going to get seven terms over here. Then you realize that I don't need so much of them. Okay? So we realize that the final answer should look like this, the first three terms. Therefore, it is sufficient for me to stop only at the first three terms because I want the final one to be x squared term. It is possible only when I have the x squared term over here, multiply the constant, as well as x squared term, multiply the constant, plus some more. You go and figure out where it is. Where is the other x squared term? How do we get it? Okay, so this is the hint. You may start. How long do you think you need? Seven minutes. Seven, okay, seven minutes. So we have until 10, zero, 9. Oh, sorry, 11, zero, 9. The first binomial, 2 plus 3x power 5, I can expand it. And I only want my first three terms. That is sufficient. Okay, then I also have the plus dot 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 over here. I'm going to highlight. Some of you actually missed this out despite multiple reminders. Okay, second one. Expand it up to the first three terms. It is sufficient because I only, I finally, I only require constant plus x plus x squared term. And no matter how I multiply, right, only the first three terms for each binomial will be useful for me. Everything else, the power too high already. Don't want them. Okay, so... Expanding them will result in, in, sorry, not expanding, simplifying will result in this. So next thing, I want first three terms. The first term must be a constant. The constant is obtained only by taking 32 times 1. Okay, this 32 multiplied by 1 to give me the constant term over here. Now, next term, second term must be my x term. X term is obtained by 32 multiplied by my X squared term over here. 32, eight. sorry, sorry, multiplied by my X term, which is negative 12. So 32 times negative 12. That is another X term. Okay, and final X term comes by 240X multiplied by 1. So that's 240X multiplied by 1. And I use the opportunity to straight away factorize out the x. Okay? So we do the same thing for x squared term. Simplify to get 32 minus 144x minus 240x squared. Alright? So, yes. Can we say the fact below the green part again? Can I say the step below green part? Okay, can. So see, ah, the green part is just the individual binomials. When I want to expand them out, I know the format is going to look like this. Oh, did I erase it already? Okay, I know the format is going to be a constant plus something x plus something x squared. This is my first three terms when I expand them out. Do you agree? Okay. Um, in order to get my constant term, 
when I multiply two of these expressions together, there are so many things to multiply. Wow, everywhere, right? Then uh, here, 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 there are so many. The only way to get my constant term is if I take 32 multiply by 1. Agree? Yes. Ah, that's my 32 over here. Now I want to tackle my second term, which is my x term. Out of all the possibilities of multiplying them, how do I obtain an x term? Constant times x. Okay, I've got a constant over here, 32. I've got an x squared over here. So 32 multiplied by negative 12. If you like, you can put an x over there. Then you remove this bracket over here. You get it? Uh, but I don't want to do that because I want to straight away factorize already. I want to skip a few steps. So this is not the only way for me to get my x term. Like Sihan mentioned, constant times x. Well, I've got another x over here. I've got a constant over here. Shouldn't I multiply them together to get an x, squared, an x term? Yes. Yeah, I should. Okay, so that's how I get 240 times 1. Next term will be my x squared term. I want to generate x squared. It is obtained only by multiplying what by what? Constant by x squared. Okay, constant and x squared. 32 and 60. 32 and 60 over here. Do I have another constant with x squared? Yes, 700, yeah, 720x squared with 1. Okay, that is found over here. Is there another one? Ah, x power 1 and x power 1. So 240 times negative 12. Any other possibilities? No more already. So this is my x squared term. So when I, if I were to expand out, it will be this. Final answer. The first three terms, 32 minus 144x, Minus 240x squared. 10? Questions? Uh, corrections are, you can go back and watch the video. So, yes? Uh, are you asking me the value of this question? But I didn't tell you how many marks they are worth, what? So, can you tell me the 10 marks? Okay, I don't know. Okay, next one. Plus, focus. Four marks. Ah, four marks. And you can get it for under four minutes. One minute thirty per mark, then go on. Okay, okay. Plus, I only have about five minutes left, ah. So, uh, if I find out another simpler method from Mr. Chong, I'll share with you, okay? Next, um, work example number ten. This one is a very important question. Work example number ten. Find the 8th term. Although it is very important, I think you'll be able to get it quite soon. Uh, in the expansion of 4 plus x over 2 to the power of 13. 8th term in the expansion. Do you want to expand everything out? And then, oh, this is number 8. This is the term? The one? Okay, so what better way is that? General term. Okay, can you tell me the general term? Wait, wait, wait. T, what is it? Oh, R plus 1. It's not R, right? Okay, then what do we have? N. What is N? In this case, what is N? 13. Choose R. Then? 4. Power? And what is N? 13 minus R. Followed by? R. Okay. So this is my general term. What this means is that every single term is going to look like this. What do they want? Huh? Eight term. Eight term. What is the value of R? Uh, eight. Oh, eight term. You see, eight term. Oh. I want term number eight, right? Yeah, seven plus one. Ah, okay. So this will be seven plus one. What is the value of R? Seven. Seven. Substitute in. Uh. Equals to 13 choose seven. Four power 13 minus seven which you can do mentally, it is 6x over 2 power 7. Find the 8th term. Okay, then according to our textbook, they already gave you the answer. It will be 54912x power 7. Does it make sense? So how to check? Uh? What do you mean how to check? How sometimes I get number right, then got a proper pattern, or like number maybe right, uh. I do like uh, maybe got mistake. First, uh -huh. I don't give the uh, nice number. Uh -huh. Then how to check for 
you I I don't have any other way for you to check answer apart from really checking your work over here. You see in binomial, we are we often get huge numbers or weird fractions, very big fractions, improper fractions. So check your work off like this, uh, step by step. Okay, that's my advice for you. Alright? So now your turn to try it. I want you to do practice now. 10, part A. This is on page 96. You have, you know what, one minute is sufficient. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. We'll start at 11.19. Here is my answer. I want my general term, which is TR plus 1. It is going to look like this. Um, 16, choose r, 3 to the power of 16 minus r, negative 1 over 3x to the power of r. And since I want my fifth term, so I want t4 plus 1, so I change out the r to 4. Okay, 3 power 16 minus 4, negative 1 over 3x, power 4. Then you simplify, you will get 11941020 over x power 4. How many of you got this? Okay, good. Alright, x power 4, right? Okay. Uh, one final thing I want you to learn from this. Huh? This is my general term. I can rewrite this as 16 choose r, 3 to the power of 16 minus r, negative 1 third to the power of r, as well as x power negative r. Am I right? Am I right? Look, your loss of indices. Just give me less than one minute. I want to write it this way. Suppose I tell you that there is a certain term where I have something with x to the power of... Um, negative 6. Okay? Suppose I have a term uh, that it looks like this. Something x to the power of negative 6. Can you therefore tell me what is the value of r? Six. Equals to? Six. 6. Okay? All you need to do is to compare this. 10? Then, the other thing is, if I say the term independent of x, you know when you expand, uh, you get many, many terms. Or with uh, x power something, x power something. When I say term independent of x, would that be x? No. Independent of x means no x. no x. Then what is the power of x? Zero. Yes. When I say this is important, term independent of x means that power of x equals to 0. Okay? So with this, you your homework is Practice now 11. Question 1. Okay, I will check it tomorrow.